Hello everybody, Jordan here, the PH is silent. The next planes to discuss are Yisgard and Limbo. I have no idea how to correctly pronounce Yisgard. I'm assuming Yisgard. I did search the internet looking for a pronunciation guide, but came up with nothing. And if you know how to pronounce it, let me know in the comments below. Brush off your international phonetic alphabet skills. So Yisgard is a chaotic good slash neutral plane. So really chaotic and then 50-50 good and neutral. It's interesting. Yisgard is one of those planes right on the cusp of one alignment or the other. Arcadia was like this too, super lawful but good and neutral at the same time. Yisgard is the place of heroes and glories. It is where rage and valor is proved. It is the battleground of eternity. Yisgard has dark caverns, soaring mountains, and deep fjords. A biting wind blows at the hero's back. It has seasons that reach exhausting extremes, harsh winters and scorching summers. Yisgard is home of all the slain heroes who wage eternal battle on the fields of glory. When a hero falls in Yisgard, they rise up the next morning to continue their eternal war. I imagine all those barbarians and fighters that get their glory and honor on the battlefield wind up here. You know, Klingons. Yisgard is probably just Stovacor. Kingdoms of giants, humans, dwarves, gnomes, and other beings are present in Yisgard. Heroes come and test their might against the plane itself, but also dragons and other creatures that reside here as a test of might. Yisgard is a series of floating islands or continents that float atop immense rivers of earth, flowing forever through an endless sky. Fires rage under each earth river, giving off a reddish glow at the top. Large earthquakes can occur when chunks of earth on these rivers collide with one another, sometimes spawning new mountain ranges. The 3.5 book says that some Greyhawk deities exist here. Kord, the god of strength, and Ali Damara, the patron of thieves, reside in Yisgard. The second edition manual of the plane said that the Norse pantheon of gods has a place in Yisgard too. But in second edition, this plane was known as Gladsheim. Same place though, shifting rivers of earth, three layer plane, you get the idea. And speaking of the layers, there are three. Yisgard, the top layer, Muspelheim, the second layer, and Nidavellir, the third layer. Yisgard floats in the sky above the churning earth rivers. It is the most well-known and well-traveled of the three layers. It's dotted with dozens of huge halls, smoking battlefields, and hilly terrain leading to cold seas. The middle layer, Muspelheim, is made up of those earth rivers, some continent-sized or larger. The ground smokes and burns and is known as the land of fire. It is hot here, and fire giants make their home on this layer. The ground eventually rolls towards some fiery mountains known as the Serpent Spine. This is where the majority of the fire giants live, building barricades and watchtowers to defend their territory from rival clans. The third layer, Nidavellir, is under the earth. It is a chaotic array of tunnels that open into large caverns where numerous dwarves live. It's warm here, heated by hot springs and geysers. Underground forests grow here with strange wood that needs no sun, only heat to grow. Caverns of clear quartz and precious minerals are very common. There are dwarven and gnome kingdoms here, and most of the layer inhabitants are mortal, but some petitioners live here as well. Really, this third layer is a giant weapon and armor building factory. The dwarves and gnomes are constantly crafting, hoping to advance their smithing, room craft, and magic. Strange enough, the drow also live here underground. Although not as evil as the material plane cousins, they mostly want to be left alone. But occasional fights break out with other races. Limbo. The chaotic neutral realm of Limbo. This place is interesting. Known as the ever-changing chaos of Limbo, it is where everything and nothing is possible. It is where chaos seethes and where the elements come to die. Limbo is filled with this magical miasma, which can form into any element or even a structure. It's a soup of impermanent matter and energy. Stone melts into water that freezes into metal that turns into diamonds that burns up into smoke that becomes snow, and on and on in endless unpredictable change. It is where everything and nothing is possible. It is where raw chaos lives eternal. Landscapes similar to one found in the material plane drift through the miasma, bits of forest, meadow, a ruined castle, or a small island. There is no gravity in Limbo, but a character can drift through the space merely by thinking it. There are no layers here, or if there are, they are continually being created and destroyed forever. However, despite no layers, there are three kinds of terrain in Limbo. Uncontrolled raw areas, controlled areas, and stabilized areas. Sentient creatures can exert their will upon Limbo and shape or even control the ever-changing chaos. They can force a localized calming influence. Sometimes there is no control whatsoever. These areas are known as raw Limbo, where everything is chaos in its pure state, no rhyme or reason. The elements and terrain change at random. 
Controlled limbo is another story. Controlling a raw area of limbo is an exercise of the mind. A character must make a wisdom check to establish control over a raw section of limbo. If he or she succeeds, a player has established control over the area and can reshape it as they desire. The favorite of adventurers is a chunk of earth with a pocket of atmosphere containing breathable air. The area remains under control as long as the controller holds it. No subsequent checks are necessary. However, another creature can wrestle control away from them. If more than one creature successfully gains control of an area at the same time, the control goes to the contender with the highest intelligence. Same rules apply if two controlled areas drift and merge together. The creature with the highest intelligence remains in control. What happens if two creatures have the same intelligence? I couldn't find any information on that, so I'd assume you'd have an intelligence ability contest between the two. Finally, Stabilized Limbo is a section created by a creature with a high wisdom, like 20 or higher. It is the center of a controlled section of Limbo and is basically more stable than that, for lack of a better term. Several industrious creatures could bring bits of Stabilized Earth together and use them as a foundation for more permanent structures, especially if tended by guardians. The Slod and the Githzeri are common inhabitants of Limbo. The Slod have been native to Limbo since time began, with the Githzeri arriving later. The Gizzeri came seeing a plane available for conquer, a challenge to their indomitable spirits. The Slod control a limbo just like travelers do, but seem to have an uncanny sense of it. They don't lose control if they're unconscious, and the area of control surrounds the Slad tightly. To view a Slad traverse through limbo would be a curious sight, as it shapes the elements so close to its body, it appears to travel through fireballs and molten rock without issue. They range in gangs from two to five and hunt the drifts of chaos for food. The primordial home of the Slod is the Spawning Stone, which the Slod return to for their mating season. The Githzeri congregate in cities and monasteries. They learn how to be deadly fighters or spellcasters in the city and follow the way of the monk in their monasteries. Their buildings do not reflect the use of gravity, so it's not uncommon for walls or stairs to be missing from certain structures. The Githzari and the Githyanki were once one race, but a civil war started between them, dividing the race in two and putting them each on a separate path. The Githyanki typically live in the Astral Sea, with the Githzeri living in Limbo. And that's it for today. WebDM, another great D&D channel you should check out. They did a really great video on Slod and how weird they are. You should check it out. Next week, since I've already covered the Abyss, will be Pandemonium and Carcerie. So stay tuned. As always, thank you for watching, and I will see you next Wednesday. Bye.